elbow your neighbor say since i can't hug you i just want you to know that you are beautiful you are special you are important let's give the lord a big hand a big hand and you may please be seated i think you have one of the best music ministers in the world your instrumentalists are top notch your vocalists are something else you will sing in heaven it's such an honor to be here today for the first time and I'm sure it's the beginning because I'm already in love with this church There are places you go and you don't want to go back. But this one, I'll come again and again and again. <laughs> Hallelujah. I give God all the glory. There are two major things every married man should give his wife. Space and place. When a man doesn't allow his wife to shine, that man is a coward. So when I see men that give room to their wives, that give spaces and places to their wives, I honor them. Please join me to honor Pastor Obusme. Thank you. I met him before I met him. My husband loves him so much and he kept speaking about him to me. And when I met him, I wasn't disappointed. Thank you for being secure enough to give room to your wife to shine. Thank you for being comfortable in your own skin. So let women be. See what we will have missed. We give God thanks for your life. And you will continue to shine brighter and brighter. Yeah. I didn't know about Pastor Dio's dream, but you know, like my husband would say, spiritual things don't happen by accident. She just stood out. And I don't do that. I'm too busy for that. I have too many people in my life. I'm a woman on assignment. But when I saw her, the Lord marked her out. The rest is history, and we're just starting. Thank you, Pastor Dio, for inviting me. And honestly, you are beautiful. Inside and outside. You're such a beautiful soul. And I think I have a word of advice for your husband. You need to start giving her bodyguards. Because she doesn't look married. Thank you for making God proud. Thank you for giving me so much joy. Thank you for staying in your place in destiny. And thank you for this invitation. I'm not here because I'm the best of preachers. No. Thank you for listening to God and for bringing me. The Lord bless you more and more. And this relationship will continue to glorify God and bless us both. I honor you, Jennifer. Well done. Well done. I can never be tired of listening to you. Well done. And greetings to your senior pastors. Tell them I love them and there's nothing they can do about it. I thank God for, for Lucky and Wally that drove me here today. They are a fantastic representation of this ministry. There are people that you send to go bring a guest speaker and they just finish the anointing before the guest speaker comes. Well cultured people, very good people. I thank God for you wherever you are. The Lord bless you and your children. In Jesus' name, I bring you greetings from my husband of 36 years, Bishop Felix Remy Adijumo. 
the only sugar in my tea. And the only tomato in my jollof rice. The only lipstick on my lips. The only rose in my garden. And the only brain in my skull. When he had that one, he said, you are the only spinal cord I have. Please celebrate my husband. I thank God for my precious sister, daughter, and friend. Pastor Molara. Such a good-hearted lady. And what a word she brought today. At a point, I had to be binding and losing. Lara, stop. Because you're already preaching my message. Lara, stop. I love her so much. She's such a gift of God to us. Some of you are meeting me for the first time. I'm the only wife of one man. And I'm a grandmother of eight. I'll be 58 in a few weeks' time. And I'm a Jesus lover. That's the greatest qualification. Today, I just want to pour my heart to you. And I want you to listen very carefully. I'm raised for women. Everything that touches the woman touches me. It's not a career, it's a calling. God puts me here on planet Earth for women. That's the reason I'm living. And I want to take you all on a journey today. I want to remind you, probably there are some things I'm going to say that you've heard over and over. But I want to remind you of some of the things you've known and you've forgotten. Or that you need to no. As we navigate under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, the theme of this conference, the insightful woman and a foundational scripture given by God's handmaiden is Luke chapter 2 verse 51 B. And he went down with them, Luke 2 51 B. And came to Nazareth and was subject to them but his mother kept these sayings in her heart. To be insightful means to be accurate. To have deep understanding. To be wise. To be astute. To be discerning. To be penetrating. To be intuitive. And I'm beginning this sharing today. Where's the timer? I need to know when my time place. I'm beginning this sharing today with you by reading out a poem that I penned many years ago, maybe about 20 something years ago. I just want to read it out to you. The poem says, I see you. I see you through love's eye. My jewel of utmost value. I see you product of my hand. Perfection on Eden's shore. The carrier of procreation. Joint partner with me in divine factory. I see you afresh. Rocking destinies. On succulent things to come. To generation yet unborn. I see you on golden pews. I see you, my daughter. My wife woman, I see you. The woman is what we are dissecting today. The insightful woman. Having created every other thing, the almighty God discovered that there was a vacuum Something unique was missing. Something of immense value and worth. Something without which all other things are incomplete. 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 The woman 
is it? The very good. Thank you. God's comment after each creation was, it is good. No matter the height or weight of the creature, the Lord still said, it is good. But when the woman came, the Lord said, or oh, the Lord screamed, it is very good. Woman, you are the very good dimension of creation. Nothing was very good until you came. What a pride, what a joy, what a celebration to be a woman calls for rejoicing. When I was born about 58 years ago, people gathered to cry for my father. Again, what will she ever become? My father tells me regularly, you are better than seven sons. Woman, be glad that you are the very good dimension of creation. The full stop. After the Lord made the animals, he put a full colon. After the birds, a semicolon. After the man, a comma. But after the woman. <laughs> this implies completion. Nothing can be improved on any longer. The woman's arrival announced perfection. What a beautiful day the Lord must have had. His rest began when the woman was created. And the Lord rested. He didn't rest after he created the man. And the Lord rested. Woman, be glad that you are the full stop. You are the crown. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse number 1. Proverbs 12, 1. A virtuous woman is a crown. A crown identifies a king. It is the emblem of authority. It is the beauty of kingship. The crown is usually treated with awe and reverence. I don't know why I decided to write my note and read it out to you today. Usually I'll jump everywhere and preach. But this was, it was so strong on my heart. It's a letter from God to you. Please listen to it. When you get the tape, you can now make your notes. Listen, let this sink into your spirit. The crown is the beauty of kinship. The crown is usually treated with awe and reverence. The crown lives at the top. Its place is the head. No one wears the crown on the leg. As a woman, you were made to be one on the head. You are the crown of creation. What a joy. You are the crown. You are the new language. At creation, the Lord saw that it is good and he said it six times. Genesis 1. It is good. Even with the entrance of the man, it was still good. But with the advent of the woman, the language changed. A new language evolved. An adjective was introduced to humanity. What an invention. I'm glad you brought and introduced the new language. You are the change in the atmosphere. As soon as the woman landed, the atmosphere in the Garden of Eden changed. Adam exclaimed, this is now the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Genesis 2.23. Genesis 2.23. The margin of my Bible reads, at last this one. The Lord was not mistaken. Adam must have been showing signs of loneliness and dryness. So God said it is not good for the man to be alone. The atmosphere was probably becoming tense. Then it happened. The new arrival, the woman, Adam smelt her. Adam felt her. Adam sensed her. It showed in the atmosphere. What a blessing. Woman, you are the changer of atmospheres. You determine what happens in the environment. Therefore, it's important for you to learn to celebrate because womanhood is a blessing, not a curse. 
those daughters that you gave birth to, they are blessings. It doesn't matter what society says. Society labels what society does not understand. Womanhood is a mystery, not a mistake. God is always right. He cannot make a mistake. Woman, you were created with a purpose in mind. When God created the man, it was because the man was wanted. When God created you as the woman, it was because you were needed. Needed. God is too wise to be confused. You are not a divine error. You are not a biological mystic. You were planned and consciously executed. God is fantastically strategic about you. Look at your shape. Everything God forgot when he created the man, he put on your inside. You are a man with a womb. Womb man. Womb man. Womb man. That's who you are. Womb man. God forgot the breast. When he made the man, he gave it to you. You are an extra. You have excess luggage. God forgot the womb. When he made the man, he gave it to you. If you are a mother, these are two powerful, irre irreplaceable communication gadgets. No matter how fantastic a man is, he cannot breastfeed a child. Stop looking at what you don't have. Be insightful about yourself. Many times we, we applaud people, applaud people. When will you see la pause to applaud yourself? When will you give yourself a standing ovation? When will you say, baby girl, you are trying. You think it's easy to be a woman? You think it's easy to be your husband's wife? That man? When you are bulletproof in who you are, it doesn't matter what anybody feels about you. The man that left you and now today you are a single parent. Listen to me. It is his loss. People look at you and they say, you are too this, you are too that, you are too fat, you are too ugly. Just do like this. Oh, I know life can be difficult for the blind. people define you. People that are unimportant to your destiny. They said something and so opinion is the cheapest commodity on earth. You are not a biological mistake. You are not a spare tire. You were planned by God. Do you know how many millions of spermatozoa struggled to be you? When you couldn't fast, you couldn't pray, you couldn't sing in the choir, you couldn't read the Bible, you couldn't do nothing. You fought millions and you won. They wished they were you. You won. How much more now that you are born again? How much more now that you are conscious? How much more now? First Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. First Samuel 17, 37. The God that delivered me from the mouth of the lion and the bear. The God that fought for you when you were in your mother's womb. He's still alive. The victories of yesterday is for the battles of today. Remember. When you want to give up. Remember when you couldn't do anything. And you fought. You are not a prayer warrior. You are a prayer champion. Refuse that name. When anybody calls you prayer warrior. Excuse me, no. I'm not a warrior, I'm a champion. The great God of heaven, the only wise God, initiated your existence. So why will you allow anybody, any relationship, to redefine you and call you names? Why will you stay in an abusive relationship? 
because of what they will say. They were they there when God created you. Why? God intended for you to come. He discovered a need, a very crucial one for that matter. He chose no other person but you to meet the need. No one can, can adequately fill the gap. You are a round peg in a round hole. You are on errand. And it calls for jubilation. Let no devil deceive you. Let no one put you down. You are a woman made with a purpose and for a purpose. Come on, woman. It's time to celebrate. You're not empty. At creation, God made you naked but not empty. He breathed into you. The breath of life. The single breath contains more than you can ever exhaust. When God picked you up, when he made you and he breathed into you, he put inside you what you cannot exhaust. And this morning, I'd like to share several major components that are contained in you. As a woman. The list is inexhaustible. But these are just the ones the Lord impressed on my heart to share with you. Discover your worth. Tap into the grace. Glorify God. You are in here for a great, great time. As a woman. As an insightful woman. To be insightful means to be aware. To know what life is all about. Let's go on this beautiful journey. I want to travel in broad. I want to look at your inside and show you what you have that you have forgotten. Number one, the power of utterance. Every woman is endowed with this power. The power of utterance. It is an asset meant to enhance your destiny if properly used the power of utterance can bring unimaginable blessing to you and to everything that has your signature the effect can be beyond your comprehension the power of utterance abigail is a woman that readily comes to my mind amazing as one that understood this power and used it positively in 1 Samuel chapter 25. She found herself in a situation that looked abnormal. She was married to a fool. Only God knows how she got into the mess, but let's leave our guesses till some other time. Anyway, she was in this situation when a big trouble ensued. David, the great man of war, had been of tremendous help to Nabal. Abigail's husband. The reason why some people are trapped today is because they forgot and they keep forgetting the people that helped them. When it was a quarter to shame. When there was nothing. When nobody would have touched them with the longest pole. They forget them. Many people treat their mothers and mothers-in-law as if they are pieces of rag. Hmm. Life is governed. The entire universe is governed by laws. That's what creates order. And laws are accurate and absolute. Whether you are green or white or blue, if you jump from this edge, you, come, you crash. Whether you are a child, you are a Muslim, you are a Buddhist, it's the law, the law of gravity. And one of the laws that govern the earth is found in Genesis 8.22. While the earth remaineth, seed, time, harvest. That's called the law of laws. The law of cause and effect. If you don't want to reap it, don't sow it. Nabal had forgotten. Ingratitude is a sign of insanity. People that held your hands when nobody would have. Don't forget. It was now neighbor's turn to reciprocate the good deed. 
Strange enough, he refused to oblige David. This rightly infuriated David and he embarked on a journey of revenge. Be careful. It is not snake bites that kills people. It is the venom. If a snake bites your finger, if it can be stopped, if the venom can be stopped from traveling to your heart, it's not that snake bite. It is the venom. Be careful. Forgive people, not because of you, but beg your pardon, not for their sake, but for your sake. Because you are the one carrying the venom. People will continue to offend you. It's normal. Pastor Daya mentioned somebody's name when she was bringing it up. And I turned to Pastor Gusai and I said, my friend. My friend. I was on a flight from Kenya to Nigeria. And for about two hours throughout that flight, I was praying for him. I was praying for him. Just interceding for him. Don't let anybody change you for your sake. Abigail, who in wisdom intercepted David's deadly mission, used the power of utterance. It was somebody that hinted Abigail, be good to the people around you because you don't know what they can become tomorrow. I lived with my uncle for about 10 years and his wife. They treated me very well. They didn't know I would ever become great. And one day the Lord said to me, build them a house. So I took money and did it. Get them a car. This is the second one I'm doing. And I said to the wife, all the rice I ate in your house when I was living with you and you treated me well. Till Jesus comes, you won't finish. So I have put both of them on salary for life. Treat people well. Mordecai, treat people well. Treat Esther well. Because you don't know what your Esther can become. Treat people well. The power of utterance is one of the major weapons that Abigail used to quench the fiery darts. Hear what she said in verse 24 of 1 Samuel 25. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial. Even Nabal, for as his name is, so is he. Nabal is his name, and folly is with him. But I, thy handmaiden, son, not the young man of my Lord, whom thou didst send. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. This lady was current. She knew what was happening. And she, she used the power of utterance. She did. Abigail reeled on and on, capitalizing on this power until David was pacified. David said, Blessed the Lord God. Blessed be the Lord God which sent you this day to meet me. And blessed be your advice. Blessed be your words. This great man was flawed just by the utterance of a woman. The evil was averted and Abigail's life and household became spared. What a great asset. The power of utterance is. However, it is pathetic to note that some women use this power at the detriment of their destinies. This will shock you. That same Abigail in verse 41, when David wanted to marry her, she said, when David sent people to go bring her, she said, oh, he wants to marry me? I'm so grateful. Let me wash the feet of the servants. She used her mouth to define what she will be in David's life. Washer of feet. Not of David's feet, but of the servants. And that was what she became. While Bathsheba was getting thro a throne for her, her son, Abigail used her mouth. The same mouth. She used her mouth to call herself washer of feet. And that was what she became. The same mouth that my car used to deliver David was the same mouth she used to kill her own destiny. I said, woman, be watchful how you use your tongue. It can either make or mar your destiny. In my study of the scriptures, I discovered that the very first time the devil approached Eve in the Garden of Eden, the devil spoke only 14 words. But to my greatest amazement, Mother Eve replied with 44. Can you imagine?
imagine, pull out your Bible, Genesis 3, you will see it there. King James's version. I believe that that was where the trouble actually started from before it graduated to the full-blown one that we eventually had. 14 words. She replied with 44. Many relationships, homes, cities, projects, destinies have crashed by reason of the tongue. Watch out, woman. The Bible says in Proverbs 13, 3, he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. Your tongue is your life. Use it wisely. Better be quiet than speak foolishly. Be positive. Say positive things about yourself. You're not ugly. Beliefs are formed by what we hear over and over and over again. Be positive. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. No woman is ugly. You are beautifully, wonderfully and fearfully made. Psalm 139 verse 14. Appreciate what you see in the mirror. Thank God for your shape, your size, your figure, your stature, your height, your completion. Your complexion and everything. I mean everything. Please be pleased with yourself. You are the best of you. A father God could have ever made. When what you seem. When, when what you see. Seems contrary to what you want. Speak what you want. Contradictions can never cancel the covenant. After God has spoken. Every other speaker is a late comer. Speak what you want. Let no situation make a pessimist out of you. Refuse to be the devil's trash can. Be very positive about your life. What you say is what you will eventually see. Genesis chapter 1. God said it and God saw it. And it was the first day. God said it and God saw it. Say only what you want to say. I'm unraveling and unwrapping who you are. It's on your inside. Become insightful about it. You are loaded. The power of utterance. Number two is the power of emotion. This is the expression of your innermost feelings. Every woman has the ability to influence people and situations with her emotions. There is a way as a woman you communicate messages through your eyes, your face or mere looks. The expression on your face can determine a lot. There is hardly any secret a woman cannot unravel. Few men can resist the tears of a woman. Very few can stand her anger. You remember Samson? One of the greatest men that ever lived. Delilah finished him with her emotions. Judges 16, 15 to 17, she said unto him, How can thou say I love thee when thy heart is not with me? And she pressed him daily until he told her all his heart. Samson fell flat. What the Philistines could not get through force, Delilah got by choice. This power is not meant to kill. It's a gift of God. And the gift of God does not add sorrow. Use your emotions to build be compassionate, be sympathetic, build, defend, help, feel for people. You're a woman of purpose. Don't allow your emotions to make a mockery of your destiny. Be sharp, be decent, be in charge of your emotions. Don't let it run wild. Never use it to kill another Samson. God's kingdom has lost enough of them. Use it constructively. It is meant for profiting. The power of emotions. Number three is the power of perception. The insightful woman. This is on your inside. The power of perception. There is an inbuilt mechanism in a woman that makes her see with the inner eyes. This is what is referred to as intuition. Something that hints you. Somehow you just sense it. You feel it. You perceive it. To a large extent, if you develop yourself, particularly your spirit man, your perception is usually right. When a woman wants somebody about an imminent danger, you better listen. When she says, I don't know how I'm feeling about that business, you better pause. Many husbands have landed in avoidable troubles because they neglected their wife's warnings. A woman is like the ego that sits 360 degrees. Even when a woman is looking straight, don't be deceived. She's seen everything in the horizon. 
you are hugging her husband. She's looking like this. So she's seeing after service. Don't think she doesn't see. Woman, don't neglect your intuitive feelings. It is a gift of God. Prayer, cover it. Put the Holy Spirit upon it to brood over it. Don't misuse, misuse it either. Profit yourself and your loved ones by it. Number four is the power of love. The insightful woman. The power of love. The woman was born into the atmosphere of love. The almighty God made her the last born. Biologically speaking, my last born, she has a set of twins, and then she has, she has three boys. She has a master's degree in international law and diplomacy. With all her accomplishments, there's still a way I feel about her. Last born. My husband is 66. The mother passed at the age of 110. Last born. You could still tell, Mama will say, Show sure, Sheba, I hope you don't have malaria. 60 something year old man. Last born. Woman, you are the last born. God made it so. After God created you, He didn't create any other one. You are the last born. And there are some privileges a last born enjoys. And then you were brought, when you came, you were brought into the loving, waiting arms of a man. You see, a man defines himself by his job. I am the pastor of, I am the CEO of, a woman says, I am the wife of. <laughs> it's mother's time, mother's summit time. A woman brings out the picture. She's holding and praying for her children. You don't find that with a man. It's hard for a man to take the picture of his family, even if he has it, to be hidden in his wallet. A woman, she will put one in her Bible, put one, she's, oh Lord! She forgets to pray for herself. A woman is relational. So, you hear a woman say, I want to go and pee. You want to come? Five women will stand up. <laughs> Where are they? They say, in fact, me too. I'm <laughs> you can't find two men. Where are you going? We want to go and pee. Men? Because when the man opened his eyes, he saw job. When the woman opened her eyes, she saw relationship. You're not inferior to the man. You're just different. And you have the power of love. To a woman, love is a natural thing. A man can lust and call it love. A man can have, can say to a woman, you are the only sugar in my tea. And he has five other cubes. That's why a man can marry five wives in Africa. But a woman, for her, love is a natural thing. It's inbuilt. It's part of you. There's no sacrifice a woman cannot make as an expression of her love. One day, Jesus was in, was in Bethany when a woman anointed him with an alabaster box of ointment. A very expensive perfume. In fact, some Bible scholars say it was a lifetime savings. Some men felt it was too much a waste. But to the woman, it was an expression of her love to her master. In John chapter 20, John 20, after the resurrection, Mary Magdalene went to Jesus' tomb and demanded for the Lord's body from the supposed gardener. Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him and I will take him away. John 20, 15. She never bothered about the inconveniences of carrying a corpse. She didn't even think about that. To her feminine mind, where there is love, there is a way. That's the reason of an average woman. You are an embodiment of love. It's a gift from God. Invest it wisely. Don't allow the devil bastardize it. Don't allow people change you. Don't let anyone pollute it. Don't let it turn to loss. Love the Lord passionately. Be committed to serving him. Seek him early. Spend and be spent for God's kingdom. People will offend you. Don't allow that to change you. Don't close your eyes for bad people to pass. Otherwise, good people will also pass. You have the power to love, don't hate. Forgive offenses quickly. Let no root of bitterness defile you. Allow no strife in your life. So love it is in you. So kindness you have it. So affection. That's the stuff with which you were made. Break down your alabaster box of ointment. 
Every woman has it. If you don't have it, go get it. Every woman, your financial life should not be dependent on any man. If it is, you are a colossal disgrace. Get something doing, even if it is selling something from the boot of your car. The totality of your financial life should not be dependent on your husband. You don't need to be taking permission every minute before you give God one dollar. Before you help somebody. Excuse me, sir. Can I? It's not a great life at all. Break your alabaster box of ointment. It's your own. Let the odor go around the room. John 12, 3. Let the odor go around the city. Let the odor go around the world. Let one widow go to bed thanking God for you. Let somebody somewhere thank God for you. One day my driver said to me, Mom, even if you don't pray again, we were in the car, just the two of us, he just adjusted the mirror and said, I want to say something, Mom. I said, go ahead. He said, even if you don't pray again. I said, how do you mean? He said, the, the prayers of lepers in this city, you know, I'm the one you always send to them. You need to hear the kind of prayers they pray for you. As they pull the duvet on, as they use the teacup, as, they, as their children wear those dresses, mommy, they are praying for you. Who is going to bed thanking God for you? It's on your inside. Your generation is eagerly waiting for you. Number five is sex power. Sex. The insightful woman. I'm taking you to a place in yourself so you see that you have this power. Sex power. Sex is a gift of God to humanity. It is his wise organ of intimate relationship and reproduction. If properly used and directed, sex brings joy and fulfillment. Sex is an integral part of a woman. Its use determines a lot. A woman can be made or marred by its proper use or otherwise. Perversion of sex is an aberration. As an unmarried woman, no man deserves your body. Until you are legally joined to him. I mean, be old school. Four days ago, clawed 42 years that I got born again. And Jesus will still meet some of us as his remnants. It doesn't matter how unpopular it is. If you're not married to a man, don't give him your body. Don't waste your dignity. Keep yourself pure. Let no one despise your youth. Primary style sex is not a fashion. And if it is, prefer to be outdated. Dear to be different. You'd be glad you did. Many ladies entice married men with their bodies. Thus, breaking other people's homes. God frowns at this. The man is only wasting your time. Men. The Bible says the heart of men is desperately wicked. Not heart of women. Pastor, forgive me. So when the man says, don't worry, I will divorce my wife. It's a lie. It's a lie. Stop wasting your life. You sow the wind and then you reap the whirlwind. If you break another woman's home, a hundred women are waiting to break you. Woman, you are an expensive commodity. Stop living cheap. You are a Deborah. Don't live like a Delilah. You are a jewel. Stop living like a Jezebel. Sex is a gift of God, but don't pervert it. Womanhood is a blessing. Don't waste it. Womanhood is a pride. Don't disgrace it. Womanhood is a joy. Don't downgrade it. Add to the excellency. You were created to be a blessing. Don't end up a burden. You were made a pride. Don't end up in the pit. Number six. Power of sensitivity. The insightful woman should be aware of this. Get the tape of this message. Listen to it in your car. Record it on your phone. Play it over and over again. I'm just describing you. You have it on your inside. I'm not laying hands and saying, receive it. You have it. I'm telling you to become insightful of it. See it and use it to the glory of God and to your benefits. Power of sensitivity. A woman is a terrific, sensitive creature. She understands the language of the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the face and what have you when you squeeze your face the woman understands when the baby cries she knows just what to do part time in fact she determines the atmosphere of the home 
There is almost no language the woman doesn't speak and understand. The languages of love, of lust. Don't think the woman doesn't understand when you are speaking the language of lust. She may pretend. The language of hatred and bitterness, they are all in her encyclopedia. She transmits, interprets, and disseminates information with so much ease. One wonders at her effectiveness. I wrote all this. Every damn thing I wrote. They just copied from nowhere. Just to describe you. A woman understands when you enjoy her company. She can tell when her presence is boring to you. A woman is a very interesting and wonderful creature. A godly woman is a great asset. She easily senses it when the Lord is passing the message across. However, it is pathetic to note that the devil tries to afflict the woman's destiny by making her to be hypersensitive, thereby taking advantage of her. One man that has nothing to do with your destiny tells you, you are beautiful because of that you are flawed. I'm beautiful. Hypersensitivity. False prophets have deceived many women. Bring this. Come and sleep in the church for five days. Let me sleep with you. Don't see the Lord. Many women have lost valuables to these fraudsters. Just because they have a caller doesn't mean they have a calling. Some other women have ended up with wrong marriage partners. Some women will have gone further, faster than where they are today if not that they married the wrong person. Watch it, woman. Your sensitivity is an asset. Don't let the devil make a liability out of it. The last one is the power of procreation. There are many, but these are the seven I'm sharing with you today. The power of procreation. Woman, you are God's greatest partner in the business of creation. What a privilege. Every part of you, like the palm tree, is a blessing to procreation. Your womb carries the seed. Your breast gives suck. Your eyes show love. Your ears listen. Your hands cuddle the baby. The list is unending. It's so amazing. The baby is crying in the father's hand. Give to the mother. She knows what to do. Isn't it amazing? Without the woman, humanity would probably have ended. You prolong human existence. The Lord has trusted you with the continuation of humanity. What a joy. What an awesome responsibility. Apart from the biological procreation on your inside is the womb for carrying visions. Travel in broad. Take a trip in what? On your inside is another dream. Waiting to see the light of day. Give it expression. Give it expression. So Mary with her womb carried the Savior. She heard the news. Jesus spoke to her. Luke 2, our foundational scripture. She nursed it in her womb. I stand here today to tell you that when I was born, there was no spoon, not golden, not silver, nothing, not even plastic spoon. But I stand here today to testify that there is a God in heaven who is the changer of destiny, the rewriter of history. Your background does not mean that your back should be on the ground. There is something on your inside, call it forth. I have written by God's grace and published 104 books blessing people around the world i have an orphanage the government has given me approval to give children up for adoption the first child we gave up for adoption is now an american citizen there's something on your inside that you can do i have a home for women that are in abusive relationships because i believe and i'm leading a vanguard that the covenant of life is superior to the covenant of marriage. You have no business staying in an abusive relationship. 
So I provide a safe haven for them to come. Stay for six months, not pay nothing. While we sort their lives out. We reach out to the in-laws. We reach out to their parents. We reach out to the husband. What is the cause of this? Blah, 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 you know, and all that. And while they are doing that, we empower them. Go learn this. Go back to do school. Do this, that. Because when you are not empowered as a woman, you become subservient. Times have changed. Only Jesus is as it was in the beginning, today and forever. If you refuse to change, you will be in chains. Some women are married today and the reason they have issues is just because of the way they dress. In our church, they don't wear jewelry. Go and marry your pastor. Your husband wants you to wear it. For 10 years, I wasn't wearing jewelry. The first time I put a tiny stud, my husband said, you look like a woman. So in his heart, he wanted it. But religion wouldn't let me have it. If you see my wedding picture, you will cry for my mother. No makeup, no jewelry, nothing. Coco sack dress. Pneumonia scarf veil. I got my, my, my wedding dress from England, but in those days, we had to show it to our pastor's wife. And my pastor's wife looked at it and said, Sister Funke, when souls are perishing. I see souls have not been perishing before I was getting married. So she condemned that one and made me this Coco Sack one. I still have the picture in her house in one corner, the dining area. One day I went there and said, Ah, Olufunke, the person that did you like this. No try at all. Religion. The man wants you to dress in a particular way. You say in our church, this society will not say. When you get married, you have only invited someone to invade your privacy. So be very careful who marries you and who you marry. Be very careful. Stop looking 67 at 37. Few weeks, I will be 58. I'm almost 60. What are you telling me? Every day, I still do 10 kilometers. Five to go, five to come. You see, down there, you ask for pandediam. Pandediam in my language means pandediam. Bring me a bottle of mouth. What about go to me? Every evening, 11 p.m., you are there. And you say the devil is after. It's not devil. It's yam. <laughs> I don't have a children's hospital. My husband and I have two 21st century compliant hospitals. 21st century compliant hospitals. You get there. You say, oh, it's just that I don't want to be sick. I don't want to leave this place. Many people are extras in the movie of their lives. People determine what they do with their lives. So that people will know. Some of you, you live your, you live your lives by social media. So, Instagram continues to help you shift the goal. If I can only have 20,000. So, when you get to 20,000, they move it again. If I can only have 25,000, pass on that your house to a million. And that's what you are spending your life. Your life. Who is your lawyer? Who is defining you? Be so secure in who you are. You can be slim and be unhealthy. You can be fat and be healthy. It's not... In the size. Take a good care of yourself. Look good. But I'm addressing your womb today. There is something. There's another dream. We are applauding you. Well done. You've done well. At 58, I'm just warming up. Because age is a dumb thing. I'm still dreaming. By God's grace, I just roofed a place in Africa. It is called Oh, I shouldn't be saying this publicly. It is called FFE Center. It's a place for women. I've had that dream for 14 years. Now we have roofed, we are plastering, we are done with this ceiling. Where women will just come in. Because I noticed that when women go on vacation, they don't really vacate. 
they go shopping. Messi is this. They will buy this. They don't relax. So you come in here. You pay a token. You check into your room. You wear your shorts or your or your spaghetti. Some of you are salivating. There's a salon there. You can make your hair. There's a spa there. We massage you. In case you are there with your husband, there's a small salon for men. Because it's a place for women. I'm passionate about women. There's a salon there. Nail salon. Beautiful. There's a small park where you can play ludo, play chess. You come there, you just relax. And if you are like maybe 20 or 25, there's a small library. All the books that have helped me, helped my husband, putting it there. I'm leaving a legacy for my world. When death comes, and that will be when I'm 103. Do you see, I'm just halfway. You can't find my name on any list that uh, the plane crashed. I'm not there. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No. But Christians that excuse me, my case is different. When death comes, I'm going to give death a horrible time catching up with me. Death is going to run and death will catch me Climbing another mountain, conquering another mountain, not sliding down a valley. Made up my mind not to die as a woman, but to die as an institution. That after I'm gone, you'll still be doing research about my life. I meet you. Recently, I changed my description on internet. I said, Excuse me, I need to call myself a name. So I put there FFA, reformer. I'm a reformer. I step into your life, something must change. No matter the level at which you have been operating, something must be added to you. I've made up my mind. The insightful woman. Woman, please don't go to the grave with that song, with that book, with that ministry, with that some of you were born with golden spoon. I didn't have any spoon and I have published 104 books. So what are you doing? What are you doing? I have adopted children. I have grandchildren. My children are serving the Lord. What are you doing? God's grace is here. Stop wasting it. God does not need to create anything. These several things and more are on your inside. Get the tape. Listen again. I've just taken you on a trip to yourself. Is there. Thank God for all that you have accomplished. But excuse me. Well done. Joshua 13 1. You are old and well stricken in years. But there is more. More. Sit down and think. That's your womb. Give birth to something. Be a blessing. Dream yet another dream. Make progress. Climb higher take a leap. You've tarried long on that mountain of success. Go a step higher. The ladder is right in front of you. Ladders are for climbers. Ladders are for risers. It's time to celebrate another success story. You can be one of these three things. One, historian. Those who focus on the past. Two, reporter those who focus on the present. Three, futurists. Those who focus on what is coming next. Historian, reporter, futurists. This is what the Lord laid on my heart. And I want to commit you to God. In case you are here today, I want to minister to a few sets of people in the, in the remaining few minutes that I have. And you are not yet born again. You are just existing, you are not living. There's no life outside of Jesus. It may look like you have a life now, but it's shallow. It will soon pass. If you will come to the Lord Jesus Christ, you don't need any special thing. 
Everybody, please just bow your head. You may want to put your hand on your chest and say, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. I believe in you today. I give my heart to you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Wash me clean. Welcome into my heart. If you prayed that prayer, I believe you are saved. So I pray for you today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that the Lord God of Israel saves you. He will wash you clean and write your name in the book of life. And when Jesus comes, you will be a part of the wedding gifts in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray for you, those of you that are trusting the Lord for the blessing of the womb or you are believing God for who to marry or there is a marital crisis or a relationship crisis or business or career or it has to do with your children or your health I'm putting everything up there's a lady here you bed wet and the devil has been telling you all sorts of things kill yourself no that's why God sent me here some of you are here You've been having issues with your financial life. You have money, but you don't even know what happens. It's as if there's a basket in your life. If you fall into any of the categories I have mentioned now, you have issues with your health, you have issues with relationships, you have issues, you're believing God for the blessing of the womb, you have a crisis in your marriage, or whatever, you listen to what I said. Please be upstanding, I want to pray with you. Put your right hand on your chest as I pray. It's a point of contact. Father, I present all these precious ladies to you today. By reason of your grace upon my life, I ask that you will touch and meet them at their various points of need. In the name of Jesus. I frustrate the talking of the enemy concerning you. From today, step into a new day. A new phase. A new season of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. I remove the hand of the enemy from your life. You will testify. People that don't even like you will bless you. God will settle you. And the new dream you are going to bath now. God will use it to help you fulfill purpose. Those of you giving your heart to Jesus, today I hand you over to the precious Holy Spirit to keep you, to defend you, and to be with you. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Everybody give the Lord a big hand.